the Minnesota Vikings come up with another nail-biting win, 34-28 to win over the Carolina Panthers in overtime, moving to 3-3 three and three on the season, and now is second in the division after the Bears just lost to the Packers, and this is the first away win of the season. Now, being a Minnesota Vikings fan cannot be good for my mental health right now because it feels like every week I am stressed. Every week I'm sweating because it always comes down to the last moment. It doesn't matter who we play whether we play the Detroit Lions or Arizona Cardinals. Detroit Lions are 0-5, Cardinals are 6-0. Or I guess Lions are now 0-6. It doesn't matter who we play. It comes down to the last second field goal in both of those games. But 3-3 is a comfortable spot going into your bye week at this point in the season. We have a tough four-game stretch after the after the bye week, and I was expecting better than 3-3 three three going into our bye, but again, we can make up for this. The Vikings have lost some bad games so far this season. It really comes down to it, though. Can we beat the Packers? Can we outbeat the Packers who are 5-1 and one in the division right now? And you may remember after the Detroit Lions win, I said it didn't feel like a win at all because the Vikings played awful and they came down to a game-winning field goal that was a 54-yard field goal that was hit by Greg Joseph. Hats off to him. Did Had a terrible day once again, but he had a good day against the Detroit Lions because it's the Lions and you can't have a bad day against the Lions if you're a kicker because when it comes down to it, you can beat the Lions. Um, But in reality, that one didn't feel like a win. The reason why that one didn't feel like a win was because everyone played awful and it came down to that play. You might say the same thing about this Panthers game where you're going up against a Panthers team, a banged up second or a banged up defense, and they're without their best player on offense, Christian McCaffrey, and they had six drop passes in the game. Going into overtime, Vikings should not have gone into overtime against the Panthers. It just shouldn't have happened. The game should have been over. However, that doesn't mean the Vikings played bad. That means it was a couple plays that held the Panthers in the game. That was the blocked punt that was returned for a touchdown and the Justin Jefferson fumble that was two scores later. The Carolina Panthers scored a touchdown to Ch the rookie Chuba Hubbard. I think I'm saying his name correct. Really came down to those field plays right there. Why the Carolina Panthers did go into overtime with the with the Minnesota Vikings and those bad plays kept the Panthers in the game as the Minnesota Vikings dominated on all cylinders. They did. The Minnesota Vikings had more first downs than the Panthers, a higher third down efficiency, more rushing yards, more passing yards, more sacks, more turnovers, and a higher time of possession. Minnesota Vikings had four sacks in this game and three turnovers, huge for this Vikings defense. They looked great. One of those turnovers coming off of a Rashad Breedland interception on the very first play of the game. If you remember in the preview for this uh for this uh, week, I said that the Minnesota Vikings would get three or more turnovers for the bold prediction of the week, and they did, getting three turnovers, one on an interception, and two fumble recoveries. Minnesota Vikings defense came up huge and had a great day. Now again, you look at the stats, and it might be a little misleading. You look at the stats, and you would think Vikings defense had a better day than they actually did. It really, the Carolina Panthers offense just played awful all the way through. I mean, DJ Moore is the only player who was really looking okay out there. He still had a drop pass. Six drop passes for the Carolina Panthers offense did not look good. I'm seeing all over the place. I mean, that the Vikings looked bad and they shouldn't have went into overtime. This game should have been a 20-point something win. There was a couple plays that bailed the Carolina Panthers out, like I said, but this offense looked great. Scoring 34 points against one of the league's best defenses, and really, it comes down to our guy, Kirk Cousins. What a year he is having with the Minnesota Vikings. And you're now seeing Mike Zimmer is liking Kirk Cousins. You know why Mike Zimmer is liking Kirk Cousins at this point? Because Kirk Cousins is the only reason Mike Zimmer still has a job. And that's just facts. After the year we've seen from Mike Zimmer, the play calling we've seen, the designed plays, both offensively and defensively, Mike Zimmer should not still have a job. But Vikings are 3-3 three and three going into their bye. With a tough upcoming schedule, Mike Zimmer is going to be the head coach, but likely the rest of the season with the Minnesota Vikings. It depends on how the season goes, but Mike Zimmer will likely be the quarter or the head coach for the Minnesota Vikings the rest of the season. If they wanted to get rid of Mike Zimmer, they would have done it by now. But Kirk Cousins, 48 passing attempts with a 68 completion percentage, 373 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, zero interceptions, 112.6 passer rating, two rushes for 16 rushing yards, and a tackle. You can't forget about the tackle. I'm not going to leave that out of there because Kirk Cousins did tackle uh who was it? I can't remember who recovered the fumble from uh, Justin Jefferson, but Kirk Cousins did get a good tackle. That was a nice block or a nice knock out of bounds. Once again, Kirk Cousins, one of the best quarterbacks in football. I can't say he's the best as he had a couple bad games this year so far, and he's hands down not the best. But when you look at it, Kirk Cousins with a clean pocket, this is what happens 
when you put the ball into Kirk Cousins' hands, when you're able to protect for Kirk Cousins, this is the game you're going to see. What you saw Sunday's game against the Carolina Panthers, you're going to continue to see because the Vikings have a great receiving core, an excellent running back. You're going to continue to see this offense look this great as long as the offensive line can protect more than three seconds for Kirk Cousins and as long as Clint Kubiak gives the ball to Kirk Cousins and doesn't just run through the run and doesn't just... If you give Kirk Cousins the ball to pass more than three yards is what I'm saying here. Because I'm tired of all the screen passes I've been seeing with the Minnesota Vikings, all the check down passes I've been seeing with the Minnesota Vikings, and all of the run plays I've been seeing. I want everyone to shut up about Kirk Cousins not being a clutch quarterback. Because all I've seen from Kirk Cousins this season so far has been a clutch quarterback. The clutchest quarterback. He led the Vikings, if you, do, if you remember, he led the Vikings to a game-winning, should have been a game-winning field goal against the Arizona Cardinals. Great defense. Vikings should have won that game. He led the Vikings to a game-winning field goal against the Detroit Lions when they finally put the ball in his hands. He led the Vikings team to another game-winning drive against the Carolina Panthers. Two game-winning drives as the first one was a missed kick going into overtime. So Kirk Cousins has just continued to been the guy for this Vikings offense and through this season needs to be the guy on this Vikings team. We need to revolve our offense around the pass. This is not the same Vikings team we saw the last couple of years. We can't give Dalvin Cook over 30 targets a game or 30 uh, touches a game and expect to win. We're going to be playing Baltimore Ravens upcoming, one of the best run-stopping defenses. Packers are looking okay when it comes to run-stopping as well right now. We also have to play the Dallas Cowboys, another great run-stopping defense. Time and, uh, again and again. I mean, Vikings have to continue to put the ball into Kirk Cousins' hands because he has been a clutch quarterback so far this season and has continued to look like top five in the NFL this season. And Kirk Cousins is having himself a year, and I'm so happy to say that. And Dalvin Cook still had a great day. Now, Dalvin Cook, he still might be the best player in this Vikings offense. I'm not going to say that the Vikings cannot continue to feed Delvin Cook. But what I'm saying here is if the Vikings want to win against these upcoming teams, they have to revolve the offense around the pass. Because you have one of the best, probably second best wide receiver tandems in the NFL right now. Only behind the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Where you have Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson, two of the league's best wideouts. You have KJ Osborne, who is developing into possibly the best wide receiver three in the NFL. On top of that... You have Tyler Conklin, who's surprising defenses. Chris Herndon just got a touchdown, but we're not going to really. Uh, D.D. Westbrook is also getting utilized. You have multiple players in this Vikings offense who you can continue to target and revolve your offense around the pass. And this is a Vikings offense that we have not seen in a long time. And I'm so excited to see how this game continues to go. With that being said, Dalvin Cook is still a beast. Dalvin Cook is still unstoppable. Now, he had a lot of runs without a gain, but still had a great day. 31 touches for 143 scrimmage yards, 4.8 yards per carry, a touchdown, and he did have a fumble, but it was recovered by himself. So it's on the stats that he had a fumble, but it was okay because he recovered it. Uh, Minnesota Vikings, Dalvin Cook, still a great running back. Again, the Vikings, uh, the offenses or the defenses that we're going to have to face, Vikings have to continue to revolve the offense around the pass because this is what you see. This is what you see when you revolve your team around Kirk Cousins. When you give Kirk Cousins the ball to throw more than three yards, he performs. When you can protect for Kirk Cousins for more than three seconds, he performs. And it's so good to see Christian Darius, our first-round draft pick, starting at left tackle over Rashad Hill, because that's really what we needed right now, is Christian Darius to step up and be that player for the Vikings team. Kirk Cousins threw some of the best balls I've seen this season so far out of all the teams. Now, I'm on uh, Twitter and everywhere, it's kind of showing that Adam Thielen, what a catch. Great catch by Adam Thielen. Adam touched down Thielen getting that catch. What about the throw from Kirk Cousins? I mean, he threaded the needle. That was a perfect pass to Adam Thielen, who made a great catch. And then you also say, KJ Osborne, what a catch. Game-winning catch for the Minnesota Vikings. Again, KJ Osborne did have a great catch. Are we just going to dismiss the fact that Kirk Cousins threw a beautiful rainbow on the money, hitting KJ Osborne on full stride for a touchdown? Kirk Cousins is unstoppable, and everyone doesn't want to admit it. Only the only people I hear saying how great Kirk Cousins is is Vikings fans at this point. Seems like all around the league, people just love to hate on Kirk Cousins. But you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that because as long as you continue to hate on Kirk Cousins, he continues to play with a chip on his shoulder and continues to perform as great as he's been performing. So continue to hate on Kirk Cousins, please, because it has worked well for him so far this season. Taking a look at this, though, Kirk Cousins made his receivers look all like superstars, and they are superstar receivers because we have the second-best wide receiver tandem in the NFL after the Buccaneers.
Adam Thielen had 13 targets for 11 receptions, 126 yards, and a touchdown. What a day for Adam Thielen. Adam Touchdown Thielen is back. See what happens when you target Adam Thielen. I believe Adam Thielen had four targets in the last week's game against the Detroit Lions. This is what happens. You give him 13 targets, you win the game. It's that simple. Adam Thielen is still one of the best receivers in the NFL. Justin Jefferson did not have a great day. He did have a fumble that really put the, that is part of the reason why the Vikings went into overtime. Still had 14 targets, eight receptions for 80 yards. Still an excellent receiver, but he did almost lose us the game by that one fumble by, that he had. And people are forgetting that he had a fumble because it was in the first half. KJ Osborne, though. KJ Osborne is a beast. I mean, who knew? I mean, we figured we had expectations for KJ Osborne based off of preseason training camp OTAs. We had expectations for KJ Osborne. Who knew he was going to be Kirk Cousins guy on third down? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. You have Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, two great players who you want to give the ball to on third down. And the ball's going to KJ Osborne. And he's coming up with it and down with it every single game i love to see this player making all these explosive catches i mean the arizona cardinals catch was beautiful one of the best catches i've seen this season kj osborne continues to look like a great receiver and i'm so relieved to say this it's going to be interesting to see when bc johnson and chad bb come back how they're going to really use them on this offense because right now we look fine without them i mean chad bb will likely be gone with the team not with the team anymore bc johnson will still be that rotational guy on the outside but again, this wide receiver tandem that we have without Chad Beebe and BC Johnson is good enough and it's been working. And I love to see KJ Osborne continue to make plays like this. Seven targets for six receptions, 78 yards and a game winning touchdown in overtime. I believe that was a 25 yard touchdown to KJ Osborne. A beautiful throw hitting Kirk Cousins through it on the money. A rainbow deep ball to KJ Osborne hitting him on full stride for the game winning touchdown. This feels like a win. I don't know why people say this doesn't feel like a win. The Detroit Lions game did not. I, I said that in the podcast, and I'll say that again. The Detroit Lions game did not feel good. It didn't, because the Vikings looked awful, and that really had to do with the play calling. This feels like a win. Vikings made a lot of mistakes. They did a lot of too many penalties, too many bad plays that kept the Panthers in the game. As a whole, this Vikings team performed on all cylinders, offensively and defensively. Not special teams. Offensively and defensively, the Vikings team looked great, and this is a team that you can see. This is a Super Bowl contending team. Do I think it's going to happen? Absolutely not. Because the Minnesota Vikings and Mike Zimmer is our head coach. And our coaching staff as a whole does not look very good. Other than Andre Patterson. Love the guy. That's my, that's my guy right there. And he's why the defensive line looks this great. But as a whole, Vikings, we should be competing for a Super Bowl with the offense and defense that we have. Defense has looked great the last couple games. And it's going to be hard going up against the Cowboys who have so many playmakers on offense. And really, it just starts with, with uh, benching Bashad Breeland. Yes, he had an interception in the first play of the game, but Dantzler also looked good. I'm not a big Dantzler guy, though. I mean, if the Vikings don't bench Bashad Breeland, it's not the end of the world. I'm still not a big fan of Cameron Dantzler, but he has outperformed Bashad Breeland time and time again every week. But the Vikings defense as a whole looked great against the Carolina Panthers offense, who love to drop the ball. Really, the MVP of this game was Robbie Anderson dropping all the balls for the team. Vikings defense came up with four sacks, two tackles for losses, five pass deflections, and three turnovers. Almost was four turnovers. Eric Kendricks did not come down with that one interception, but that was totally fine because the Vikings defensive line came up with multiple turnovers for this team. Uh, Patrick Peterson's looking like a great starting corner and was able to contain DJ Moore. Has more and more tough matchups coming forward, though. So we really have to rely on Patrick Peterson's injury and to him to come back fully healthy after the bye week against the Cowboys, where he's going to have to be going up against Amari Cooper. Minnesota Vikings this bye week. This is a perfect time for a bye week. The Vikings are 3-3 three and three with a tough schedule coming forward. This is a great time to rest your players, get these players back. Michael Pierce got to come back, especially when you go make a, up against Zeke and Tony Pollard, one of the best wide, or running back duos in the NFL. Uh, he's got to come back, our best run stopper. We need to get healthy in this bye week, and we need to just focus on these mistakes that have ruined the Vikings. We really need to focus on why did this team, did we go into overtime? Because yes, the Vikings dominated on all cylinders. They did. Vikings had a great performance. It just came down to a couple plays that we need to fix. And that really comes down to special teams. And that comes down to penalties on why the Vikings did go into overtime in this game. But a tough upcoming schedule. The Vikings next four games, like I've said, Cowboys, Ravens, Chargers, and Packers. Tough schedule coming forward. But this is a great time to have our bye week. And I'm, I'm excited. 
this is a good time to have the bye week and we'll be focusing on the Vikings so far who now we can really see what the Vikings team is capable of. Now we can see what they're made of and how they're going to continue to look. And we got some tough schedules, a tough schedule coming forward and we will be previewing all of this on this podcast. So I hope you all do enjoy.